everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today. We have one of our hall stars here. It's so fun. We are talking with Tori DeVito today. And thank you so much, Tori, for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. And uh, I don't know if you knew, but uh, the uh, Christmas Promise actually won one of our Hallmarkies podcast awards uh, this last uh, th- this last uh, February that we gave them out. Oh. Yeah, we, we tried to, I tried to uh, reach you, but I wasn't able to, but Dylan oh, accepted the award, uh, oh. which was fun. And uh, so it was, great. what was the award? The award was for best uh, Miracles of Christmas movie of 2021. Wow. I'm so yeah. flattered. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I did not know that actually. Yeah. Voted on by the fans. So it was very, That's very awesome. fun. We really enjoyed that film, I it was one of my favorites of the of the whole season. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. But before we get into that, we'd like to uh, ask our guest to tell us a little bit about how you got inspired to become an actress. How did that all happen? Um, you know, I always attribute it to um, seeing Les Miserables on Broadway when I was seven. Mm-hmm. I was so obsessed with that play and so obsessed with Eponine, um, the character Eponine. And I just, my mother made me a handmade costume um, that looked like hers. I used to make my dad play the, the, the male part and I used to just perform all of her pieces. And I didn't, I don't think I really knew that that was acting that I actually was like in love with yet because I was playing violin at that time. And so I was definitely like performing and I didn't get into acting until I was 15, um, but I definitely think that that play planted the seed <laughs> in my head for sure. Well, you and I are of the same mold then because I also was super inspired by Les Mis. I mean, uh, and it was when I was in high school, they had that 10, 10 year uh, anniversary concert uh, that I on PBS or whatever. And I yeah. just watched it on repeat over and over. Amazing. I'm telling you that it, there's no amount of time. Like I can watch it a million times. Like yeah. I could go see that play. I've probably seen it 10 times and yeah. I could see it 10 more. There's no cutoff. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, that's cool. I, I, I just, I love the whole message of Les Mis. It's so beautiful and the songs are so great. Yeah. I, you know, I love it. I hope you get, I hope you get a chance someday to to be in it that would be really oh my fun. god well if i could sing like that i would <laughs> I can't sing like that unfortunately but my god if i could yeah. i would be at that audition <laughs> every year <laughs> um so i was reading on imdb that uh, your dad is a drummer yes played for billy joel yeah he drummed for billy joel for 30 years oh my gosh. um He's still drumming. He's in a new band now called the Slim Kings. And actually a fun fact, um, the Slim Kings, one of their, so in the, um, we have a dance um, sequence in Rip and Time, the new movie that's coming out May 22nd. And we used my dad's band, the Slim Kings song that were the rock song that we're dancing to in the beginning. So that's really um, cool. Yeah. So I was excited about that. It's a great song. They're a great band. So um, yeah. That's neat. Uh, and so is that's how you got started uh, playing violin? Yeah. So on one of the Billy Joel tours, I think it was the Stormfront tour. Um, I was six years old and um, I was on tour with my parents. And it was the only time that Billy had a violinist on tour with them. And I was just like completely enamored with her and like followed her around everywhere. And then after the end of the tour, I asked my parents if I could play. And they said yes. And that was it. That's really cool. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. So you've been in a a bunch of different uh, shows and films 
And I'm just curious, what's it like to be in a movie with someone like Anthony Hopkins? That must be pretty amazing. I know. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't have like a direct scene with him, but I did get to um, be on set with him and I met him and he was so gracious and so nice. And then I got to watch him film one of his scenes. He had a scene where he was like sitting in the hospital and he was crying about the emotional, he finds something out, he's emotional about something. And then like the camera pans back and he had so many different variations of that one moment that he would just do, okay, now this variation, now this variation. And it was almost like watching a machine. Like he could just go from one thing to the next. And then he would come back behind the monitor and watch what he was doing. And I was like, Oh my God, I was just, it was amazing. Do you remember the first role that you ever got? Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, yeah. the very first, I did commercial work in Orlando. I did a Bush Gardens commercial where I was actually supposed to be an extra and they bumped me up that day and I was like, I have any words, but I, um, um, that was like my first like job. And then, but my first speaking role, I was, I think 15 or 16 and <laughs> there was this show called safe harbor it was on the wb which is now the cw but it was the wb back then and they were filming in jacksonville florida and i was still going to high school in winter park florida and i had one line and i played the like cute girl in school i didn't even have a name i think it was just like girl you know cute girl number one was literally like the title and then the lead character he drops his glasses and he's supposed to be kind of nerdy and i step on them and they like pan at my leg and i go oh sorry buddy and i walked away and that was my first role ever (laughs) so silly i bet you were really excited oh my god i was so excited and my friends were so i had this best friend who actually passed away like 11 years ago, but he was one of my best friends in high school and we had it on VHS, you know, we recorded it off the TV on VHS and he came over and he'd play it over and over again. And he'd be like, oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, it was funny. funny. Yeah, well, you were a part of three pretty iconic television shows, One Tree Hill, Vampire Diaries and Pretty Little Liars, all three. Uh, So that must've been amazing yeah yeah so um so fun i mean it's kind of cool because i do i do feel like they came out like you know one after another all during that time i definitely feel like it's like a a big time stamp (laughs) of my career and my life you know and i definitely attribute those shows to the success i have today you know what i mean like it they got me seen they got me this like amazing following of mostly young girls but <laughs> but I love it you know I, I'm super grateful to all three of those shows yeah yeah so your first Hallmark movie best Christmas party ever um, <laughs> how, how did you end up getting involved on that project you know what god it was so long ago I I hardly remember how I got involved I but I remember having so much fun um Stephen Lund was my um uh, co-star yeah. And he is such a fun guy. Like he was just so nice. We laughed so much. I had the time of my life on that show. It was so fun. And we kept laughing at the name. I mean, the best Christmas party ever. That's such a silly name. (laughs) Well, we need to get Steve on the podcast one of these days because yeah, he's, he's so dreamy and great. And yeah, so he's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you did right before Christmas. Yes. And that, that must have been kind of fun to be sort of, it was like Hallmark kind of quasi love actually attempt. Yeah. Well, it was fun too, because I hadn't seen Chad since we, well, actually that's not true. What's really funny about that is I hadn't seen Chad in like 10 years or something, you know? Um, and literally like a month before we went to go, or I fa- a month before I found out I was going to do right before Christmas, I did this random One Tree Hill convention in Wilmington with Drew Seely and Chad. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and then a month later, I found out I'm going to do a movie with Drew Seely and Chad. And I was like, that's so weird. I haven't seen them in a decade. And I just saw them. And what's funny about that is like, 
I mean, I, I love Chad. It was really wonderful working with him. Um, and it was fun getting to do that film with him. But Drew and I actually met him in high school. So I've known Drew since I was like 16 years old. Um, but that was the first time we actually worked together. So that was a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that was a fun, uh, fun movie, something a little bit different. And uh, now you are on Chicago Med. Sorry. I was. I was on Chicago Med for six years. I left um, of May, May of last year. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that must have been an, an interesting show to be on. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we learned so I learned more about the medical field than I ever thought I would. And um, I'm just like, I made so many lifelong friends on that show. I learned so much on that show. Mm -hmm. And I was ready, you know, because I'd done an so appreciative to be able to have, but I, I did so many teen shows for so long that I kept putting out there. I was like, I really want to do like adult content. Like I'm really, you know, ready to start doing like adult things. So then I got met and I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Um, so I had a blast doing that show. Cool. Uh, so the Christmas promise, like I said, I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was very well written and I, I think it was, it, it was a bit of a risk because they could have just had you yeah. starting out as the widow or you know, losing your fiance. Um, but they have you start out with a relationship with, with, with Giles, Henry, I think was his name. And that was tricky because you, it's risky to show you in two relationships because you don't want to have better chemistry with one than the other. Right. No. And so uh, once uh, you get together with Dylan, it, it could be like, oh, well, we like him, but we like her better with, with Giles, right. but it, it, that wasn't the case. I thought you had chemistry with both of them and it worked. Good, yeah. That worked really well. Yeah. I, and that's a good point. You know what? I actually didn't even think of that, but, um, I really did have chemistry with both of them. I actually, I really enjoyed working with both of them. Giles cracked me up so much. I mean, I laughed so much with Dylan too. I always feel like that's like a good barometer of like good chemistry when you're laughing off set. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But what I love so much about that movie was, and what excited me was, um, I feel like Hallmark is taking steps in, in, you know, and kind of changing certain formulas and stuff. And I felt like that movie was a part of them kind of taking steps in another direction. I mean, I don't think they, you know, especially in their Christmas movies, they don't deal with grief. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I read that, I was like, whoa, is this really a Hallmark movie? Like. Um, and I really enjoyed the script. Like I really had a lot of fun with it. And um, I just, I adored Dylan. He's so fun to work with. He's such a nice, jovial, like very humble, sweet guy. Like, I, and I, I just had a really great time. I, my favorite scene in the whole movie is the question mark or an exclamation point, the kiss. Cause oh. Not only do we get a mid movie kiss, which is rare, you know, yeah. which is fun, but I just thought it was so brilliant. The whole idea of, am I doing this thing in a bold way, an exclamation yeah. point, or I'm hesitant, I'm nervous, you know, kind of a question mark. And that whole, I thought that was really well done. And you did a great job, you and Dylan with that banter. I thought it was, it was Thank very, you. very good. Thank you. Yeah. Was that, what was that like filming that scene? I mean, I, you know, it's so funny. I have to like actually pinpoint it. For, you know, like how long ago was that? Oh, it was not, it was a year ago. No, it wasn't even a year ago yet, was it? It yeah. aired last September. Oh my God, it feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> That's um, true. I mean, you know, it's so funny because you always get so nervous, kind of not nervous, but going into those scenes, it's like, you know, to have to like draw up this like, you know, intimate moment with somebody that you, mm -hmm not really gotten to know yet um but dylan just made all those moments like so easy and so fun and like we really talked them out and i think that was the thing that we really wanted to come across as like their chemistry and like the cute moments we really wanted them to stand out so it makes me so happy that that stood out to you because like you said she did start you know in love madly in love with somebody else so dylan and i really had to make those moments like different than her first relationship but also like just as much chemistry if not more but also respectful of her past he wanted to be like respectful of her right. past 
Did you, so there was like a lot of layers that went into it, but yeah, it was fun. I also liked the whole group of friends mm. that you had. I felt like if, if that it felt like a group of real friends with chemistry, I thought they did a good job. Yeah. yeah, we all had fun together. They were they were great. You have like Karen Holness, Matthew James Dowden, and yeah. some really fun actors. Totally. On there. It was great. Cool. Well, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Rip in Time? It seems like a quirky, interesting movie. Yes. I absolutely love this script. Um, it's a movie based on the Rip and Time fable. Um, it's about time travel. Um, I play Sarah Majors, who is an organic farmer, and she's living in upstate New York. Um, after leaving the city, um, she has a kid. She's a single mom. She lives up there with her dad. They have, um, you know, like they sell produce and um, Rip, she finds him one night in her barn. And the whole story is kind of about him telling his tale and her thinking, you know, trying to figure out like, what is wrong with this guy? Like he must, I think her sympathy for him comes from like, he must have PTSD. There must like, he, he hit his head. He really did hit his head. So she's like, you know, he must have something going on. And, um, and then them kind of developing this, you know, connection through all that. And honestly, when I read the script, I was like, I love the way this is written. I love this story. And then filming it, I got to film with Niall Mater, who's absolutely amazing, like the sweetest guy ever. And we had great chemistry. Um, and then uh, the other guy who, who was in it with us, Casey, I'm blanking on his last name. Um, he was absolutely incredible too. It was just- Anderson. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, every single actor on that show was incredible. So not only did we have like great writing, but we had great acting. And even the kid who played my son, um, he it was his first job ever. And he uh -huh. nailed it. He was so good. Like, and it was so great. And I loved our director, Jessica Harmon. She's amazing. And she brought such fresh eyes to this script. And it just, it just ticked all the boxes all across the road, uh, the, the board. And I'm honestly so excited for people to see this. I'm excited to see it. And I don't say that a lot of, about a lot of the projects I do. <laughs> I'm normally like, I don't know if I'm going to watch it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I'm really excited to see yeah. it. So Niall's character has been asleep since like for 200 years or, so, or for, well, yeah, no. So his thought, so it's more like the time travel. He just kind of came straight through oh, Okay. So that part. Yeah. But it's more like, um, he's, uh, he had a, his father, Rip Van Winkle. He thought, you know, he said he went through this cave and 20 years later, he came back, you know what I mean? And so I don't want to give away too much, but, yeah. um, but yeah, so it's loosely based on the fable. So it's on the movies and mysteries channel. So does it have some dramatic aspects to it or is it more lighthearted? Um, I would say it's, um, it definitely has a lot of dramatic aspects to it. And it has a lot of like romantic moments, more romantic moments than I've ever filmed in a Hallmark movie. Whoa, really? Yes. That's yes. fun. Um, yes, I say, I like to say we have our notebook moments in there. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely, it definitely has the drama. And I think it's just more like character driven than some of the other films that I've done on Hallmark. Um, yeah. Well, we're excited to see it. I think it's going to be really fun. I'm Very creative. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode. And that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. 
That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Well, we'd like to end our interviews with some fun, silly questions. So okay. I'm all right. first, first one was the best ice cream flavor. Oh, you know, I, I, like a pure Gemini, I switch almost every time I go. Um, but I think if like, if I had to pick, it's so funny because who complicates an ice cream flavor? Of course I do. Because sometimes <laughs> it's just like chocolate is just like the way to go for me. But then uh-huh. if it's soft serve, I love like soft serve vanilla with chocolate sprinkles. But if I'm at like Hillwinds, you got to go with the chocolate fudge brownie. Good. All right. <laughs> what is your favorite color? My favorite color is like Hunter emerald green. Oh, it's very on brand. Love very Christmasy. Color. I know, right? I'm yeah. so, it, it's a new favorite color for me. I'm like so obsessed with green right now. <laughs> okay, good. All right. What music are you into right now? Oh, I'm into everything. Like my playlist consists of James Blake, um, um, Mariah Carey, uh, old girl groups from the 50s and 60s, um, Roy Orbison. I, I love literally like everything. And then I also have like, obviously like broad Broadway show tunes in there. I've yeah. been obsessed with the new Moulin Rouge. I actually got to go to New York this weekend and I don't know how to say his last name. Um, Aaron Tivet. Aaron Tivet. Yeah. You saw it. He just ended. So you, might, just, you got one of his last. Uh, I know. That's why we flew there because yeah, I was yeah. like, I saw it here in Chicago and uh-huh. then I saw, um, that he I saw online a clip of him singing the part of the Roxanne song and I was like and I told my best friend she's like this is his last weekend let's go I was like I'm down so we went and we saw it on Friday night and when he sang the Roxanne I've never seen a vocal performance like that in my life I was like my gosh he is uh he's otherworldly I called my boyfriend and I was like babe you don't understand <laughs> it was so good um so yeah so i've definitely been playing that, that song on repeat it just gives yeah. me chill I uh, i'm a huge broadway nerd so i'm with you i just went in um march uh, on a trip and it was so What'd fun I, I actually it was it was a broadway specific trip with a group called utah theater lovers nice. and, uh, and so i actually went to seven shows it was it was amazing that's amazing i went to four this weekend in three days yeah yeah. so you saw moulin rouge moulin rouge um i took one for i shouldn't say this i'm but i've seen hamilton now six times so i saw Hamilton because my best friend had never seen it and she she has been watching it on disney plus like over and over again so i watched never see hamilton too many times you can't i mean i've seen it twice there's so much going on that you learn something new every time you know what i mean um, and then I saw A Strange Loop, which was oh jealous, amazing. And then I saw um, Tina. Oh, amazing too. I have to be honest with you. Like, I don't know that much about Tina Turner. And I was like, oh yeah, it'll, I'm sure it'll be fun. But I wasn't expecting a lot out of it. Again, like if you took what he did in Roxanne that like, I've never seen a vocal performance like that in my life. This girl that was performing it, that wow. was her the entire time. Amazing. I was like, yeah, I saw that last October. So good. Oh, amazing. All right. Well, what is your go to date night food? Ooh. And then we've been saying lately, maybe your DoorDash order. (laughs) Seriously, we love a good order. Um, My boyfriend and I, our favorite. One of our favorite go-to restaurants out here, if we're not like trying to go super fancy or anything, is this place called Abba. And it is like a Mediterranean type thing, but he loves this eggplant spread and their pita bread is the best pita bread in the world, I think. I'm not even kidding you. It is so good. Sounds good. All right, what do you, what's your favorite, dogs or cats? Ooh, dogs. <laughs> I'm not like I would say ooh, dogs, but no, ooh, dogs. <laughs> I mean, I love cats too. I definitely do, but there's nothing like a dog. I don't think. I would say 90% of people say dog. Sure. It's big. So beaches or mountains? Mountains. Okay. Uh, would you rather be in a fancy dress or sweats? <laughs> well, 100%. Okay. What is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Um, well, I mean, I guess, I guess Christmas. I mean, I love being around family and stuff like that, but I try really hard to like 
take the stress out of Christmas because I feel like it's gotten so stressful for so many people that yeah. I actually yeah. sometimes start like Christmas shopping in like September so that I'm done by October and I'm like now I can enjoy all the holidays and not have to worry about anything and I hate that it's so kind of like wrapped up in that so yeah um yeah, Christmas for the most part. Although sometimes it gets like hard to like, you know, I have my dad and some sisters on the East Coast and then my mom in Michigan and then my boyfriend's family is in Florida. So it's like, who are we going to miss out on seeing? But I guess Christmas. Yeah. And well, it's hard to beat Christmas because it's a whole season as opposed to other holidays, which are that's you know, true. just a day or a week. However, I, I don't like that they've started like putting Christmas stuff out at the end of October now. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? like, that actually upsets me. I'm like, no, I want to enjoy Thanksgiving and yeah. then we get into Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's, it would certainly make our lives easier if they started later on yeah. the podcast. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we start literally preparing for Christmas coverage in August. We oh start God. planning and getting ready and it's intense. <laughs> That's crazy. August. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Ooh. You can pick one of your own if you want. Oh. No judgment. <laughs> um, I think my favorite romantic movie <laughs> Is Moonstruck romantic? Oh, I love Moonstruck. Yeah, definitely. I love that movie. It's so good. It's so Nicolas good. Cage is so good in that movie. Oh my god, I know. Yeah. And he slaps her, she's like, snap out of it. And he's <laughs> yeah. so in love with her. I'm like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So good. Uh very good choice. Well, you did it. You answered all the questions. Yay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. I really appreciate it. And so uh, we'll look forward to the new movie and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you this holiday season as well. Yeah. And uh, do you have a social media or anything like that you want to share? I do. My Instagram handle is Tori DeVito. And really appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, so good lovely. luck in the movie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for talking with me. Bye. Bye. I'd like to thank Tori for coming on the podcast. It was so much fun to get to talk with her and to let us know what you think about all the things we talked about. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out and make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That helps us so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store and uh, take a look at all that. The information will be in the description and thanks again to Tori and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye everyone.